How y'all feeling? All right. I want to thank you all for coming out. This is a fantastic turnout. Really, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. So here we go. Let's do this. The name of this group is Mysterio. Mysterium out of necessity, uh, complete necessity. Coming to town back in 94, as a kid, 20 years old, and you know, your heroes on CDs and you know, reading interviews with people, so on and so forth. I made the transition to New York to come in and, and work with these people that had inspired me. years in to find or to admit to myself that it really wasn't going to work like that. It really didn't work like that. You know, after years spent in, in New York City, you know, as a player on, on the so-called scene, whatever that means, but you realize quickly that there's not enough space to accommodate all the talent. I came to find that in order to be playing, in order to be working, you know, in order to have a sound, I had to do it myself. That's when Mysterium came into play. Was, was really out of necessity to have a voice, to, to, to be audible, to uh, quite literally exist. Mysterium goes through different phases of development. It hears different things. You know, it wants different instrumentation, it wants different people, different personalities coming through these particular instruments. The current lineup for Mysterium, Electric Sound Paint Septet. This is my love for a lot of linear musics, a lot of funk music, a lot of rock music, a lot of dance music. Music is a way of life for me. It, it's about the freedom to express myself in music. It did have to make a choice. Like I went through life kind of with the pressures of society and stuff, trying to figure out and, and understand if, if I could really survive and be a musician. Is it okay to do what I want to do and do what I like? I recognize I am a musician. And that's what I'm going to do on this earth. That's what I'm here to do. So the other stuff will all work itself out. And that's when I moved to New York City.
music can change the world and it can improve everyone's life. So I want to share that with as many people as possible. I think things are moving in the right direction. I think you know, audiences are, are becoming more receptive, and uh, who knows, hopefully, people will start to move a little more. The last few years I've been doing it more and more active as a sideman and I'm finding more and more ways to be James in other people's situations, you know, and I really enjoy that. I mean, as opposed to just doing my own projects, uh, I'm really enjoying right now finding that I can take my thing and bring it into somebody else's thing and make their thing better by contributing myself and at the same time doing it in such a way that it brings the best out of them too. where I feel like the most interesting thing going on is watching my audience.
street and you know it's like people on the street might think it's fun watching me but I think it's fun watching them Tiny kid had two posters above my crib: a Sun Ra poster and a Boy George Culture Club poster. So that was, you know, my dad's like varied influences sort of coming to bear on my upbringing. I like having the input of a sound painter on the process. It's exciting as that relates to Mysterium. It's a smaller group gives you more space. Evan is very hands-off sound painter. It's a good balance of being able to follow your own idea to its completion and also get ready for a new set of boundaries. I remember reading this interview with Vernon Reed in Guitar Player Magazine back in like 1992, where he was talking about, he, he called the the WTFF, which was the what the fuck factor, which is that like, on a scale of 1 to 10, some music is more messed up than other music. 
but I look at it as my role in the band to uh, bump the WTFF up by a few notches. inspired by other musicians and, and composers, but I think I'm actually learned more about music and been more inspired by uh, other disciplines. When I was in college, I had a chance to accompany a beginning dance class and actually learned more about improvising com and composing by watching a dancer move and learning how can my sound relate to their gesture and support what they're doing. Mysterium, it's been a real great challenge to use language in a direction I, I tend not to go. Thinking about, about groove and thinking about rhythmic stuff and thinking about really stylistic and genre specific stuff. Whatever I'm hearing and feeling at the time, you know, whatever I'm, um, is really occupying my, my imagination at the time, is what Mysterium is about at the time. behind the drum set, you know, you, you really come up with some interesting sounding orchestrations. Mysterium for me today, as I was saying, is really this love of linear music, utilizing a lot of aspects of free improvised music, vertical concepts in music, over a linear type of uh, structure, which is itself completely improvised through utilizing sound painting. This is a big, big part of what Mysterium is today, is, is having a linear concept and then placing verticality over the top. Using sound painting in Mysterium is, is, is fun also because um, I'm a sound painter, uh, but I'm not uh, the, the artistic director or the band leader per se. You know, I'm coming into a project that has a history and a vision, I'm sort of serving that role. I've played in a lot of different sound painting situations. And I've always enjoyed playing with this system.
but there's a lot of things in sound painting I didn't hear that I wanted to hear. That's why I started the electric sound painting septet because I wanted to do something with sound painting that represented my generation. I wanted hardcore to be in there. You know, I wanted funk to be in there. I want a lot of elements uh, of linear music and groove music to be in there. God bless creativity. Thank you again for coming. I want to say thank you to the Bowery Poetry Club for continually having us here. You all are like important in the community. But thank you all for supporting the arts for real. Um, much love, you know. You come to the performance hall and you sit down. There's no, there's no song and dance. It's music. You know, you come to sit and listen to the music. There you have the people who love to hear music and the people who love to play music, and they work great together. I would like to see more of this, you know? Now you got all this money, they make whatever, $250,000 a year to play Bach over and over and over and over again. Shostakovich, over and over and over and over again. Now I'm sorry, but if Bach and Shostakovich were alive today, they'd get up and say, people stop playing my music. <laughs> you know? Like, let's hear some new music. People do what they know. You know, everybody's coming out of schools, and that's kind of the the dominant value system is that you uh, you play some impressive shit and you. Uh, you you know knock the socks off of the uh, the ten other guys in the audience who are also jazz musicians who went to the same school as you. I mean it's a, it's a little weird, you know. Where's the romance? Where's the where's the music for lovers? I 
I would love to live in a world where people were interested in engaging with art and uh, you know genuinely interested in people who are attempting to do different kinds of music and different kinds of art. I find that there's a lot of value in music that's not simply out there to, uh, to sell things to people. And I would love to live in a world where that was uh, more of that was happening and more people were interested in it. popular nowadays as far as music is concerned, it doesn't involve uh, live music at all, it doesn't involve um, real instruments, uh, it's, 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 it's a packaged, uh, produced product that people are fed, you can't grow big and strong on, on processed food. As they, they become more aware of nutrition for their bodies, they're going to become, need to become more aware of nutrition for their souls, and music is prime ingredient in that. I still feel like we're in a bit of a gap in figuring out uh, how to connect to patrons, how to connect to uh, sources of funding. Um, I think it's easy to fall into two dilemmas. One dilemma is to think that uh, you know society owes you something, and uh, why aren't people just coming to my door? Uh, and you know, my answer to that is you've got to get out your butt and work, and uh, and, uh, and hustle. I think the first thing I would I would maybe uh, question or, or challenge in, in that in the question of like creativity and culture is uh, the idea of culture either with a capital C or culture singular because I think more and more we have cultures plural I think we've got microcultures I think we've got scenes I think we've got uh, pockets of really cool stuff I think we've got uh, I think the real challenge is actually connecting people who have similar interests or similar uh, goals or passions. I think that's really the, the real challenge, just like connecting all these sort of small tribes or uh, microculture. <laughs> this is art, this is the art of living, you know, I just so happen to be a musician within that, an artist within that, um, and this is our contribution. There's no blueprint, you know, there's no, there's no security. You, you, you work without a net and you make everything happen. You risk all. I think the question
question is, is really about how can you make what you do valuable to some community, uh, whether that's someone in, in government who's, or someone on a grant board, or whether it's someone in your neighborhood. And finding your community of people who find what you do valuable and connecting with them. What I want to accomplish with this life, yes, it has to do with music, but ultimately it, it, it has to do with being alive, you know? That has to do with uh, that seagull soaring like grace in the sky, you know? Like, you know, you, you're able to see it and be with it. It's a beautiful temporary moment, you know, that's now gone. Like, the seagull was there, now I don't see it anymore. This is why I play music. This is why I love music. This is what I feel music brings you to. Further awareness of myself. Music allows me to see and feel and be me further. Understanding myself further. To be the person I came here to be. has structured my life. It's like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to practice. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go play a gig. And then at night I'm going to listen to this new CD I got. You know, so it kind of, it's my structure, just like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and sleep and stuff. And it's also, you know, uh, my higher calling too. It's, you know, my, when I see what's wrong with the world, I feel like my natural way of confronting it is with music. If I was banging on these pots and pans and pythons before I was even speaking, I came from music, man. I, I, this is what I came to do. It's beyond me thinking about it. You know, it's beyond anyone telling me about music. No one put the pots and pans in my hand. Why does a kid that's two years old do this? It's a life practice to be to be a musician. It's not just a craft. It's not something I, you know, I don't write a piece of music because that's what a musician does, is write a piece of music or play a concert. It's, I do that because that is how the world makes sense to me, is that that's what you do. You can't be a musician and be afraid to be a musician. And um, that's why when I, and I had to make that conscious decision and just go with that. sort of systemic things in society that make it really, really difficult for you to pursue a creative path these days.
The world can be anything. It's a blank canvas. You know, like when you close your eyes and imagine a perfect world, what is it to you? Reality is only what we make it. We are the masters of our reality. not entertainment. It's not supposed to distract you. You know? Let's call things that distract you something else. But let's not call them music and art. Because we don't need any more distractions in the world. I think we're really distracted enough. sound of their instrument, you know, really defined a lot for me. you you know it, it stares you in the face and 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 lets you know here I am deal with me you know in 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 here you are deal with you great work brings you moment to moment boom 
with yourself. How do we invent the language in the body, in the sound painting, to get us specific results on the fly, in real time, without it being rehearsed? what I know, or maybe even past that edge. I'd rather uh, fall all over myself trying to play something that I've never played before than uh, go through some, some stuff that I've already played. say that we could break a note we play down to all the different myriad of uh, life experiences that come into a single note. Uh, but you know, it's an exercise in futility that has benefits because it gives us new ideas.
lot of the great improvisers, I mean, when they write, when they bother to write about what they do, they often talk about how um, it starts with an accident and then builds from there. <laughs> you know, everything we play, and uh, it's almost like at that point nothing is accidental because that because the accident is our mo. into first was improvisation it opened up a lot for me and and it, it took a while to really for that to catch on and for me to feel solid with like oh this is okay to do this this is taking me somewhere that I really want to go musicians who improvise it's really about the practice of mindfulness I feel like at that moment where I'm completely involved, uh, I always feel like I'm a strand of a braid that I'm braiding with the other sounds in the room that are being produced by other musicians or if I'm just playing by myself. I'm in, I'm in tune with that, I'm braided with that, I'm braided with the emotions of the people I'm sharing the experience with and I'm braided physically with the instrument I'm playing. has actually physically altered to, to sort of facilitate my relationship with the instrument. And it feels like an extension of me. And it, it doesn't matter if I'm holding it and waving it around or, or if I'm, I'm actually playing it. It's just an extension of my body. And so feeling that braid, the braid of sound, the braid of, of emotion, it, it feels like I'm just a part of something larger. Be 
being though all we have is this moment, it's a special thing, you know. So I want to be with that on a daily basis, live with that extremely, you know, on a daily basis, because I, I think it informs us in a beautiful way and really changes how we live with each other here. Where does music and art fit into that? You know, you always hear how how music, how art has the ability to change, to heal. And I think it's true. You know, and that's not to say that music's going to stop flooding. You know, but I do feel that on an individual level, you know, music is the birds singing in the tree. And if you're touched by that, somehow that changes you. That changes your day. You know, it changes the kind of person you are. It's all a creative process, and I think when you're tapping into the creative process, that's a certain part within your body and in your in your brain and your neurological network and, and everything um, in your gut that just gets becomes more developed, and you can tap into it more easily the more you do it. Musicians should absolutely be able to make a living doing what they do. Most musicians also become better musicians when they feel like they have the support of a community and the community at large being the world, you know, the world that is sort of showing respect and support by allowing us to make a living. This is hard work, it is work, it's valuable. You know, it does have power to create positive change in the world. You know, and I'm not saying it's any more important than any other aspect of life, but it is just as important. As far as the role of, of, of a musician in society, I think that uh, I think musicians are definitely valuable. I don't think they're more valuable uh, than, like you said, a lawyer or someone working in the post office. I think everyone's equally valuable in the role they can play. Um, to keeping society going and keeping it beautiful. Some of the 
most well-paying gigs I've played haven't really been the most musically or artistically fulfilling to me. And I wish that uh, that would change, you know, I wish there was some way that, uh, you know, we could make a livelihood making the music that we love. I think we're in a, like, a really exciting time period culturally, but uh, I think it's also, uh, I think it's volatile. I think it's dangerous, I think it's exciting, I think it's uh, unpredictable. I think the hope is that we make work that outlives us. That when we're not here anymore, our work still affects people. In order to be timeless, that requires a lot of attention and work. Yeah.